question that I had for you last week was, who did John Coulter take back to the Rockies? After, of course, that was after um, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark did give him a dishonor, or I'm sorry, not a dis, but a, an honorable. They gave him an honorable discharge two months before he was going to make it to St. Louis um, in order to take this gentleman and his men up in the Rockies to go get fur. So, um, who was he? Was he A. Paris Chateau? I'm sorry, I'm having too much fun with that name. Uh, option B, George Droulard. Option C, William Morris. Or option D, Manuel Lisa. If you answered D is a Manuel Lisa, you would be con uh, correct. Congratulations. So with that uh, answer given to you, this next piece is going to be kind of a long uh, segment, but it also does involve uh, John Coulter again. Um, he's just a, a fascinating gentleman. Um, some of the the things that he went through are just unbelievable, especially compared to nowadays. <clears throat> um, so we'll go ahead and get started. The uh, Again, I'm going to give you the information first, and then at the end of this segment I will give you a question um, regarding um, what was going on. Are you all ready? Are you excited? Get pumped up. Uh, sit back, relax, grab a bag of popcorn, go to the bathroom. Um, Get some Cheetos or Funyuns. I hear they brought back Twinkies, so if you got a couple of Twinkies, hey, by all means, grab one of them. But anyways, enjoy the informational video, folks. Okay, so following the success of his trade mission in the spring of 1808, Lisa, once again, dispatched Coulter to serve as a liaison with the Crow, this time pairing him with fellow Corps of Discovery veteran John Potts. While the two men accompanied a force of approximately 800 Crow and Salish warriors to Fort Raymond, the party was attacked by 1,500 uh, of an enemy tribe. During the ensuing battle, Coulter was wounded in the leg, but managed to drag himself to a thicket, where he continued to fire his rifle from a seated position. Uh, ultimately, the Crow and the Salash repulsed the enemy tribe attack and continued to the fort. After recovering from the injuries, Coulter and Potts returned the following year to once again trap Beaver in the Three Forks region. Aware that they were essentially invading the poaching, or invading and poaching on enemy land, Coulter and Potts remained hidden during the day in order to escape detection, setting their traps at night and gathering their proceeds as the following dawn broke. One morning, as the two men canoed up the Jefferson River, they heard a commotion above the elevated riverbank to the east. Colton, or I'm sorry, Coulter claimed that the noise was caused by Indians, but Potts insisted it was just buffalo, so they persisted up the river, whereupon they came face to face with a party of approximately 800 Native Americans. Realizing that an attempt to escape would be futile, and expecting to only be relieved of his gear, uh, Coulter uh, serendipitously drops his beaver traps into the river over the side of the canoe hidden from the Indian's point of view before um, succumbing to the, uh, the um, uh, Native American demands to come ashore. The water was shallow and relatively uh, placid, so Coulter reasoned that he could come back later to retrieve his valuable gear. Upon reaching the shore, a team of the tribe instantly relieved him of his gear and stripped him naked. That is correct, but naked. So this was basically the first episode of Naked and Afraid. Yeah, if you think about it, Naked and Afraid, that would, this was the first guy on that show. <clears throat> Just kidding, there wasn't TV back then. But he would have been perfect. Anyway, so... Uh, Potts, meanwhile, remained in the canoe out of the river. Coulter urged him to come ashore, but Potts replied that he'd rather be killed all at once than be stripped naked as Coulter had been. 
An impatient Blackfoot fired an arrow at Potts, striking him, in, striking him in the hip. Potts dropped in pain, and when he once again emerged standing in the canoe, he held his rifle in one hand. Potts shouted to Coulter, saying that he was too gravely injured to escape, and that Coulter should run for it. Potts promised to kill at least one of his pursuers, as if to underscore his resolve, Potts leveled his rifle and shot one uh, brave dead in his tracks. Instantly, as many as a hundred arrows riddled his body. After which, engraved, or after which, enraged braves swarmed the canoe. The tribe wailed with rage. Relatives of the slain warrior, tomahawks in hand, had to be physically restrained from striking down the defenseless Coulter in their fury. The crush of warriors dragged Potts' body to shore and hacked it to bits. Enraged tribes members threw Potts' eviscerated entrails in Coulter's face. Coulter expected to be brutally dispatched at any moment, as Potts was, but retained some hope when he saw that tribal leaders were holding an impromptu council meeting to decide his fate. One of the elders, Coulter would later describe him as a chief, emerged from the meeting and taking Coulter to a spot about a hundred yards away from, to the east, motioned for the naked man to run. Col I had to say something about that, but I'm not going to. I'll behave. Coulter, somewhat confused, began to hesit hesitantly walk, but the elder again waved his hand and again exhorted Coulter to go, go away. Coulter peered over the elder's shoulder and saw that several hundred of the young uh, braves were casting aside their blankets and leggings while readying spears and tomahawks, and he realized he was about to play the part of the rabbit in a cross-country hunt. Naked. Mind you. Naked. Coulter launched himself into a full-speed sprint. With a whoop, the party of young braves dashed after him in pursuit. Weapons hoisted, each intent on gathering the prize. Coulter churned over the sharp rocks, stubby grass, and prickly pears of the Great Plains. Needles driving into the soles of his feet, hoping to make the most of his meager head start. He kept his eyes straight forward, not even daring to glance over his shoulder. His ears churned with the sounds of hundreds of trampling feet behind him, motivating him to keep running. I think that would motivate me to keep running too. After about two or three miles, he felt his strength begin to wane, and blood from his nose dripped down his face and chin. From his knowledge of the land, Coulter knew himself to be about halfway to the Madison River, which ran to the east, and there he hopped, or hoped to find the means of means to elude pursuers. Eventually Coulter hazarded a glance over one or yeah, he hazarded a glance over the one shoulder and saw that one brave had distanced himself from the rest, only about twenty heart, twenty yards behind. The singular warrior held a spear in one hand and had a blanket draped over him one shoulder. Sensing, sensing an opportunity, Coulter, naked, exhausted, and caked in blood, abruptly turned around, threw his arms wide, and faced the young man. The, uh, the warrior, taken by surprise, launched his spear and himself at Coulter, who knocked the, the t away the tip of with one hand, cracking the lance in two. The brave, overextended and off-balance, stumbled to the ground. Coulter snatched up the broken spear, head and impaled the uh, Native American to the ground, instinctively grabbing the blanket from the fallen man's shoulders. Colt again darted towards safety of the Madison River. Fortunately for Coulter, the rest of the pursuing tribe momentarily halted their chase at the sight of their fallen companion, providing enough of an additional lead for him to reach the shores of the Madison. Coulter turned briefly from the safety of the tree line and still saw the horizon teeming with this tribe before diving into the river. Still naked, but with a blanket in hand, Coulter quickly spotted a beaver house not far from the shore, like an enormous overturned basket in the middle of the water. He drove underneath to its branches and emerged beneath and within the wooded structure, elevating himself to the uh, second internal level of the large den. He brought the water-logged blanket up with him and hid. Coulter could hear the black, uh, hear the tribe reach the river bank, spreading out 
uh, out to search the area in search of their dangerous prey. He expected at any moment that they would hack the beaver house to bits and set it on fire. At several points they were within inches of his prostate body, walking along the top of the wooden mound in which he hid, shivering and drained. In time the, the tribe continued across the river and journeyed to search the plains beyond. Coulter remained in his, hidden, hi, in his hiding place, and two hours later the band returned, crossed the Madison River, and headed back west to rejoin their tribe once again. Remaining inside the beaver house until nightfall, the naked, shivering mountain man finally swam out of the beaver house, heading down river and still clutching his soaked Blackfoot blanket, emerged onto land and started the long walk back to Fort Raymond. Coulter ran for about 30 miles toward the uh, Bridger Mountains to the east, knowing that the only nearby gap would likely be monitored by the, the, the tribe. He instead climbed a near vertical cliff in the mountains an endeavor which took him an entire night to complete. He did the following day among the snow-capped peaks, relying only on his singular blanket for warmth, before descending the other side in the morning, and thereafter continuing his jog across the Great Plains. He traveled across the Montana wilderness as winter approached for 300 miles, subsisting on roots, bark, and prairie turnips. Finally, 11 days later, he reached Fort Raymond, Naked, sunburned, and emaciated, his condition was so dire that at first, even his close companions did not recognize him. Okay. Wow, that was an intense story, was it not? I mean, that gave me goosebumps and chills, knowing that a guy could survive naked and afraid. Anyways. Uh... So that was a little bit more about uh, John, uh, John Coulter for you. So as you can tell, this gentleman was an incredible mountain man, uh, survivalist, um, woods person. Um, now be honest, how many of you guys would have actually gave up? Knowing if you're in his shoes, how many would have given up? I know I would have. <laughs> so that's why I mean this guy is an, an amazing individual. So, question of the day is, what was the tribe that stripped Mr. Coulter naked, played the part of the or made or made him play the part of the rabbit in a cross country hunt, took a blanket, or I'm sorry, what was the tribe that stripped Mr. Coulter naked, forced him to play the part of a rabbit in a cross country hunt? and took a blanket from the fallen man's shoulder of this tribe and made Coulter travel for 300 miles subsisting on root uh, on roots bark and prairie turnips finally arriving Fort Raymond naked sunburned or naked and sunburned is it a the Nez Pierce is it B the crow is it C the Blackfoot, or is it D, the Flathead? Again, thank you all for watching. This is that Montana guy bringing you a lengthy video. Uh, again, uh, this gentleman was an incredible guy. That's the reason why it was so long. I do apologize if it was kind of boring. Um, but stay tuned for next week, and I'll provide you the answer of this question. Again, thank you all for watching, and you all, <laughs> you all. Have a wonderful day, stay safe, and enjoy the woods. Take care.